<laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, Congressman Johnson. It is an honor to be here. I was ready for some kind of a joke or something I had to respond to, but thank you very much for that kind introduction. I've enjoyed watching you serve in the seat that represents South Dakota here, and you've done so with distinguished um, honor. So I appreciate all of your service to our state and our people. Uh, thank you. Good morning, Chairman Westerman and Ranking Member Grijalva and the members of the committee. It's my honor to be with all of you today. In fact, my former chief of staff just gave me uh, my old nameplate from this committee when I had the chance to serve with all of you, which is incredibly special to me. I would put it up here today and use it, except for I don't get the chance to sit where you sit today. This is not a decision that I will get the chance to make. This is something that has congressional authority and you need to act in order to protect our people and to protect our freedom. Today I sit in front of you um, as a governor and as a former farmer and rancher and someone who recognizes the deep devastation that if this proposed rule were to go forward, how hard it would be on our people and what it means for our nation far into the future. I remember vividly uh, my time serving here on this committee. And I remember fondly working with many of you who sat on this committee with me as well during that time and the good work we were able to do in preserving our natural resources. Today, um, as the current governor of the great state of South Dakota, I want to direct my comments specifically to a piece of legislation that you are debating and considering, H.R. 3397. This legislation would require the director of the Bureau of Land Management to withdraw a rule relating to conservation and landscape health. This rule is just one of many that highlights an example of overreaching, unelected bureaucracy, attempting to perpetuate radical environmental policies that ignore common sense. They ignore stewardship practices that have been practiced on our land for generations, uh, while allowing multiple uses of this uh, precious resource to strengthen America and our people. We have doing that for many, many years. In my written testimony, which I've submitted today to you, Mr. Chairman, I list several specific reasons why this rule would be so devastating for our people in South Dakota and for our economy. Why I, take, I think it is impossible for them to move forward with this and to responsibly conserve our land. I encourage all of you to read that written testimony. It goes into much more detail. In addition to my testimony today, I've joined a letter with four other governors, with governors of Utah, Idaho, Montana, Nevada, and my friend sitting here with me today, Governor Mark Gordon of Wyoming. Uh, he's a voice, and they all voice concerns with the Biden administration directly on this proposed rule. Like many of you, land conservation for our family isn't just a theory. It's the way that we have lived for many, many generations. I was raised by a dad who often reminded me, Christy, we don't sell land because God's not making any more land. From the time I was a young girl, I listened to him talk about soil types, I listened to him talk about the importance of native ground, conservation practices, and management decisions. I learned the scientific data and the research of what it took to operate on that land and to protect it, but I also learned why he cared so much. Because working the land wasn't just a job or a career to my father. It was our family legacy. It was our way of life. It was a culture that not only preserves a critical work ethic that is so important to this country, but it also reminded us daily of the natural resources that were a gift from God. As I grew older, I learned more about the importance of keeping all areas of our country productive. To help stabilize the economy, every part of our nation needs to produce, and that would help us during very difficult economic times. I also learned how critical it was to be energy independent, how important it was to protect our nation's food supply and to produce our own food. Now, when I was elected governor, I selected a fellow rancher as my lieutenant governor. His name was Larry Roden, and to our knowledge, we are the only governor and lieutenant governor in the history of the nation that both spent our, living, our lives making a living from agriculture. We're very proud of that, and we understand as well as anyone that our farmers and our ranchers care about our land. They are stewards. We care about preserving it to pass it on to our kids and to our grandkids. My experience in business and in public office and national security issues has reaffirmed my belief that our enemies and those who hate the United States of America may never need to fire a shot to take us over. They may not need to. We are going to be surrendering our freedom by becoming more dependent on them for our critical needs, for gas, oil, food, medicine, and more. When a country controls our food supply, and our energy supply, they will control us, and American freedom will be gone. 
We cannot allow rules like this to move forward in a way that stops productivity and it stops American independence. Nearly 98% of BLM surface lands in South Dakota are grazed by permittees. Grazing is an important conservation strategy in South Dakota. We also host 76 active producing oil and gas wells and 36,762 acres. These acres provide outdoor recreation opportunities, including hunting, fishing, hiking, camping, and more, and we must maintain public access in order for these lands to benefit both South Dakota residents and visitors. Now, Mr. Chairman, I'm smart, and I realize I'm out of time, and you've got a tight schedule. But I've got much more I'd like to share with the committee today on what specifically is wrong with this rule and why it doesn't work, the redundancy in it, the unnecessary burden it creates, how it stops productivity. And the number one concern for me is that conservation is already incredibly a part of every single management practice that happens on BLM land. To go out there and to create a mechanism such as a conservation lease that could be bought by third parties, not even necessarily by people in our own country, and give them access and authority over these lands, it's dangerous. It's not just dangerous to those that are out there working the land. It's dangerous to our economy. It's dangerous to our energy independence, our producing our own food supply. It's dangerous to America. Thank you so much, Representative Curtis, for bringing this piece of legislation. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I will yield back. Thank you, Governor.